here are my parameters. This is what I like to see when I'm working with clients that are in debt, or maybe you're not in a whole lot of debt. You're looking at the infinite banking concept and you're like, I want to, you know, I want to do this. I want to practice this. I want to put it in place. This is just a preference. This does not mean you have to have this. This is just a preference that I know that you're in a healthy financial position. The last thing that I want as a licensed insurance agent is to write a policy for someone that can't pay it three years from now because they were thinking too small. They were a small thinker, right? I don't like to work with small thinkers. So when you become a client of mine, just know that it's, it's like automatically just by hanging out with me, going through these one and a half, two and a half hour case studies, just by being here, you are not a small thinker. So I'm not calling you a small thinker by any means. I'm just challenging that thought process that you have, that the, the preconceptions that are in your mind that hold you back. I want to unlock that into big think. Velocity banking forces you to think big. Infinite banking forces you to think big. When you get around like-minded kingdom people, it, it just puts you in an environment where you got to think big. You're thinking beyond yourself. You're thinking beyond your family, right? You're thinking community. You're thinking kingdom, right? So here are parameters that are like, okay, this is a, a standard of measurement to see, am I qualified for this? Just qualifying yourself. Does this make sense for me to move forward? Have I watched enough material, read enough books on this strategy to feel really confident that I'm not going to get duped by any insurance agent. I'm not going to get sold into a strategy. I'm coming to the table with a strategy. And then I'm telling the agent what I want. It's like going into a dealership and you're saying, I want this car, this trim, this color, this inside interior color, this exterior, these wheels, that, 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 that. And then the car salesman has to go and find that in their inventory rather than he or she tell you what you should get. You don't want to go into the conversation with an infinite banking agent where they're telling you what to do. Right? And I'm putting myself on the spot. I don't want to tell you what to do with infinite banking. I want you to come up with a strategy that we can go over together so that I'm in alignment with what you got going on. Right. So here are the parameters. Cash flow, 1500 or more consecutively, monthly, conservative. So conservative, 1500 a month, and consecutively, you're doing that month over month, preferably. The second thing is you have the capital ready to go, whether it's through a debt tool, like a HELOC, a PLOC, credit card, where you do the balance transfer, or cash on hand, or some kind of an asset that you can pull from. Capital is ready to go to max fund it the first year so that we can immediately borrow and, and go to work with it. And then your cash flow times 12, right? Your cash flow per year times two thirds will help us determine a healthy funding amount. So if I'm cash flowing a hundred grand a year, two thirds of that is 66 grand. That is doable because I cash flow a hundred grand a year. So I could do 66,000 or 60,000 or 50. But if you're like, give me a hundred thousand dollar policy, okay, well, we have to figure out, are you doing anything with the hundred or is it just a matter of being able to dump as much dollars as humanly possible into that account? And okay, as long as we're clear on what we want to do with our money, right? You're coming to the situation. This is your money, right? Your situation. This is our finances together that we're all strategizing. Don't come to the table completely blind, right? You don't want to do that. The next is know how long we want to fund the policy and for how much, right? So we determine how much by looking at our debt tool, looking at our assets, looking at four major numbers, cash flow times 12, times it by two thirds, gives us a range, right? And then we figure out, okay, I'm 50 years old. I would like to fund this for the next 20 years till I'm age 70 or age 80, 75. You might say, you know what, in my family, the average lifespan of my family is 95 years old. So I want to design a policy where I'm funding it all the way up to 95 or maybe 90, right? You can do it that way. What I like to do with some of my clients is I try to ask them um, questions to determine their commitment level. Commitment. That's about that right. Yeah, commitment levels. What is that, Denzel? What is my commitment levels? Well, I would ask you how long you've been married, right? You might say 15 years. I say, okay, so you've been successfully married for 15 years. Awesome. Cool. Um, how old are your kids? Oh, I have a 20-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 15-year-old. 
Okay, so you've been raising kids on average for, you know, 15 to 18 years. Okay, cool. Nice. <clears throat> Good stuff. So maybe you're raising kids and doing that for 20 years. And then I say uh, saving. How long have you been saving, mom and dad? Oh, we've been doing that. We, we've consecutively saved for the last 14 years. Investing. Mom and dad, how long have you been investing? Uh, we're kind of new at that. We've only been investing for the last five years, right? So these are not like deep emotional questions. These are surface level questions that I'm able to gather from you guys. And then what I'll do is I'll add up those numbers and get the average commitment span, right? So I say, all right, uh, 20 years plus 14 years plus five plus 15 divided by four. This, this person has an average commitment level of 13.5 years, right? This is how I determine length and time of funding. Because it's easier said than done to tell a client to fund it forever. I mean, that's that's easy to say that. But that is like, show me a case study where someone has actually done that. I have not seen it. From anyone in the infinite banking space, I have never seen someone show a case study of somebody funding a policy for over 40 years consecutively, for over 30 years. I, I have not seen it, right? But I'm 26 years old. I've only been in the industry for four years, five years, right? So I still got a lot to learn. But if it was, if this was a popular stance, then shouldn't I be seeing case studies of people funding policies for 40, 50 years in America? I mean, if the average American can't even save a thousand dollars a month, a year, they can't even hold on to a thousand bucks. The average American, what makes you think they're gonna commit? to funding a policy for 40, 50 years, just because of the whole idea of becoming your own banker. I get it, it's an amazing concept, but it does take time for concepts to sink in, right guys? It takes time for a concept to sink in. It might take a generation. So if you're 55 years old, you're 50 years old, and your average commitment level based on your history with money is say 13.5 years, and that would be my measuring stick that would be my standard i say okay let's show a policy funding for 14 years right just round it up 14 years and maybe we show design funding it for 20 25 years so let's say we know we can commit to the next 14 years but we want to set the goal to do maybe double that number you know so maybe 25 years a little you know 10 years above or or double whatever 14 times 2 is 28 right? So 28 years, let's say, is the goal. So you're 50. And then by 78, you would have funded a policy for 28 years straight. And in those 28 years, you're now sharing that strategy with the kids. And because they're younger, and it sinks in their brain early on, they start doing it as part of the culture in your household. Guess what? By the time you pass, Maybe you only funded a policy for 30 years, 25 years, but I can assure you your kids will likely do it for 40 on autopilot. And now you just created a culture that will perpetuate. And then we get to the point where the your kids' kids are funding policies for literally their entire life. Now it becomes like, oh, that makes sense. That's why the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, you know, the Morgans and the Fargos and the Chases, right? That's how, in the Fords, that's how they've been able to do things for hundreds and hundreds of years consecutively through multiple generations, right? So it's being able to set that expectation, realistic expectation, set the goals high, obviously. I, I just don't want to be in a situation where I'm the agent, I wrote you a fifty, hundred thousand dollar policy, and you only intend to fund it for three years, five years, which is not a bad idea, right? That's that's not I'm not saying that's bad. It's it's bad if you say I want to pay in a hundred grand for the next fifty years and you stop by year five. That's bad. Because now you paid an exorbitant amount in fees to do that when you could have just did a five year policy, a ten year policy, right? 